Welcome to White Horse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Today we are going to do a walkthrough of a 2014 Gray Wolf 27 BHK. And this is Ann, who's one of our techs, going to explain some of the systems. Okay, first in the very front, you've got your jack. You have a switch for the oxygen light and then up and down. Uh, don't run the jack all the way up or all the way in. It can, if you go too far and it starts to click and you don't let go, it'll jam but you have to then take this cap off and use the crank you have down in there. Or on this one, it's a 916 socket and a wrench to break it free. You may pop the fuse here, so I would try not to fully extend or fully retract. If you do, I would make sure you have a 916 and a spare fuse. Um, your propane bottles, you have an automatic switchover regulator. Right now, it's pointing towards this bottle, now it's pointing towards that bottle. Green shows there's propane in them. If it goes to orange or clear, that means they're empty. And if this one is pointing and it goes empty, you'd switch it to this one. That should go green. It'll automatically switch over on its own. Um, if you're gonna come out and check it, it's fine to use it that way. If you're not gonna remember to check this, I would turn one bottle off. And then when one's empty, you could just disconnect, disconnect it and it fill that bottle. And come back Okay, great. You have your battery in there. You do have to check the water level in it once a year. That there uh, is running the RV when you're not plugged in or plugged into your vehicle. And it also powers the breakaway switch. So if the trailer was for somehow to come completely off your vehicle, you'd have this connected to the back of your vehicle and you get pulled out and lock the trailer's brakes. Okay, and that is only for lights and blower on your heater. Shore power would still be plugged in for air conditioning or microwave, etc. All right, coming around, you have your water heater. This model has a steel tank, so there's an anode rod in it. It's on the other side of this plug. Um, you're gonna, that's a consumable item, so when you unscrew it, you'll see sometimes it's look chewed up or to look nice and solid silver. That's good, you may get some debris coming out that's from the rod grabbing the heavy metals and the sand and whichever and drop to the bottom of the tank eventually that'll be a thin metal rod at that point you replace it you have your 110 side of your water heater switch right here turn it on when you're using it or off when you're not using that's for the when you're plugged in the electric side of the water heater you have two resets right here if you can't move them that means they're not popped but if you push on them and you can feel it go in that means they were popped and you're, you'll reset them Again, this is a 2014 Gray Wolf 27 BHK walkthrough. What you're seeing is unique to this particular model. So options and features are included with this pre-owned model. This is to be used as a sample for major systems. Stabilizer jacks are there and there's a crank handle to lower them yes. to stabilize it at the campground. Okay. Um, this is your city cable in. If you're at the campground, you'd hook into that to have cable to all the, uh, all the cable outputs inside the coach and on the other side. Uh, this is a and low point drain as well, which would allow us to drain, drain the fresh water tank. Okay. For more detailed instructions, remember too, there are owner's manuals. You can always take a peek at or pop online to a Forest River website for a Gray Wolf product. And this is a Swin Tech style slide out with these rails, meaning there's a motor on each side of it. They're voltage sensitive. So if you ever have a problem where the slide out's coming in or going out crooked, you want to stop, either plug yourself in, hook it to your vehicle, bring the power back up and go in. If you were coming in and went crooked, you'd go back out. It's gonna go the opposite direction of where it was moving. And when it stops, still hold it for an additional 30 seconds because it can realize it's wrong and straighten itself out. Okay, so it can resync itself. And only use silicon spray to lube these. All right, going here further. You have a 30 amp twist lock attachable cord. We have our adapter and our own cord in it right now just so we don't have the cord laying in water and dirt okay so the actual cord for this rv is in the back storage compartment which we'll show you uh, this is to fill your fresh water tank this is the city water if you have a pressurized water source at the campground or your home you hook your garden hose into here i'd suggest using a regulator so you don't have a pressure the system and that will supply water to everything now if you fill this tank you have to turn your water pump on and your water pump would then supply the system 
Uh, the back of your refrigerator, you only need to check that once a year, just beginning of season, clean it out. Sometimes bugs and things will make nests, webs. You just wanna make sure that's clean. Okay, and there are two spin latches on that. You could use a key or a coin to help spin those and then pull that panel down. You have your outside shower, which is hot and cold. It'll run either off the, the pressurized hose or the uh, fresh water tank at the pump. Going back further, you have your outputs for your, your sewer. Uh, the gray tank being your sinks and your uh, shower. The black valve being your toilet. You can leave that open if you're hooked to the uh, campground. This you want to leave shut so the chemical stays in it. And also, if you had that open, liquids would run out, the solids would stay. It wouldn't work properly. So you want to leave that shut. Uh, when you're getting to about two-thirds, I would shut the gray. Let that fill up a little bit. Then when you pull your black, after that's done, you can pull the gray to flush everything out. Then you shut the black and put another chemical back in your toilet. Okay, so the black tank, let that accumulate. As you're dumping it, pull the gray water valve to let that soapy water rinse out your line. You have your 30 amp cord, and you have your sewer hose, which is supplied with the end that goes on the trailer. Okay. Your other jack. You have a rear cargo rack. To drop this down, you gotta pull the pin out. Okay, so bicycle cargo rack unlocks with the pins and folds flat there. attachments for it to set up to hold a bike or to hold up whatever you need to hold up. Okay, and there's a maximum capacity load of 250 pounds on this rear cargo rack. All right. This is just the door to your bathroom. Okay, and then you have your main entry door here and you have your front compartment is the back of the water heater, which you can't see real well right now. You can also go through it through the bed. Um, the other reason you need to get back there is there's valves for winterizing. Right now, this will be in the use mode, meaning when you hook up water, it'll automatically fill the water heater. Uh, when you go to winterize, you're gonna wanna turn those valves so no water enters the water, no antifreeze enters the water heater, and you just drain it and leave it empty. You would then have to get a winterizing kit, a hose or something to connect to your pump, which is under the back bump, to suck the antifreeze in and through the system. Okay, and again, we're showing you the back of the water heater because we're social distancing. Best way for us to show it to you is here. This is through the front compartment. Best access is underneath the master bed. And then you have a cable outlet here, a 110 outlet, and a, a mount to mount a TV out here if you wish. You also have your outside speakers, which are controlled off the inside radio. Uh, this has a power awning, which I will run Okay, so switch for the power awning is inside the utility door there at the entry. And your light switches for outside lights are there as well? Yes. Okay. Okay, so your systems monitor panels are there as well. Okay, so you can pitch it, but it's a pretty big awning. I would recommend putting that back in in the wind or if a thunderstorm kicked up. Better safe than sorry. Again, this is a 2014 Gray Wolf 27 BHK walkthrough, giving you an idea of how to operate some of the major systems and features of this model. This is unique to this particular stock number. You may see some different features that may not be included on other Gray Wolfs or other similar models. We're gonna take you up in and show you some of those features. Grab handle on the outside would lift up and fold over and away. And same thing to bring it, lift it up and fold it back. Coming inside the trailer, we've got entertainment center forward. And if you wanna take a- Yeah, I'm gonna show. That and then I'll show where the booster switch is. Okay, so here's the utility center. 
you have your awning, your slide out, which you would just hit in. So it's just a push button. Okay. Just give it about 30 seconds and let go. You know, it's in straight or out straight. Then you have your levels for your tanks, your black, your gray, your fresh water, or your battery. You have the propane side of your water heater. Mm -hmm. If this red light stays on, that means the water heater did not light. You're going to want to turn it off, turn it back on again. Give it about five minutes before you check that. If it's still on after five minutes, then you turn it off, turn it back on. This is for your water pump. And then just your light switches, two for outside, one for inside. Do you have to have the switches on on the lights themselves in order for those to yes. work? Okay, because I noticed there are switches on the pancake lights as well. Okay. And then up above here. Switch with you. You have your booster and switch for your cable. When the button's in and that green light's on, you're blocking outside cable and you're boosting the antenna signal, which we are on now. Once I push the button and it comes out, the light goes off. We lose our antenna, but now it would allow the cable to come in from the outside. So this one switch controls every TV out output on the coach. You have your radio here, which this model is either Bluetooth or AM, FM, phone. It has some auxiliary uh, connections in the back, but you have to go into it to the back. Okay. And then you just have your A and B switches for inside and out. Okay, for inside and outside speakers. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, on this model, it has a jack light bed. To make it into the bed, you got to lift up and pull out. To make it back into a couch, you lift up, grab the back of it to pull towards you and push the bottom in. Okay. And then back. Um, microwave. Kind of, it's the same as anyone's microwave in their house. Your stove, this is similar to a grill. You turn on the light, light them, you spin it. The sparker sparks the light. Some, if it's been airbound, you haven't used the system in a while, it may take a couple minutes for that to light. Okay. I'd like this before you do anything. Use all the appliances only try and light three, three times, and then they go into a safe mode where you turn them off and turn them on again. If you light this, it helps get a lot of the air out of the lines. Everything works a little easier. Okay, great tip. Again, for more specific details and information, please refer to the owner's manuals. I'm going to switch with you. I'm going to have you back up. We'll go through the systems at the back of the coach. This dinette also converts for sleeping. The pedestal table legs wiggle out of the bottom. You can store them away, and then your cushions come across to fill in to make that into a bed as well. Uh, Air conditioners here. Your AC, all the controls are here on the AC. You have options for AC or just the fan running. You can do either. And you would just go to off to turn it off. This is your temperature and how cold you want it. This here is a quick dump. How much help if you want the air to dump straight down, it moves more rapid. Or you can manipulate these vents to decide where you want air and how much out of what direction. These, this is your filter. Uh, it pops down to clean, or on this style, you can just hit it with a vacuum to clean it out because it's a, a thin mesh filter, not one of the thicker foam ones. Coming back here, you have your thermostat for your heater. You just move it to there for what temp you want, all the way over, you'll feel a click, that turns it off. It will run a little bit after you turn it off for the fan to clear it out of any excess propane. Your refrigerator, you have options here to have it on or off. Then you can either have it on gas or auto. If it's on auto, it'll select 110 first. If it loses 110, it's going to switch itself automatically to propane. And on this model, the temperature control is a little piece in here that slides. There's actually a sticker that tells you warmer or colder. The owner's manual would explain that also. And I noticed you pushed the center of the door handle to unlock it. Yes. So when you push it closed, it clicks into place, lock yes. for travel. You don't want to just grab the handle. You want to make sure you push that Push in. it in. And if you do hear a fan running during our walkthrough demonstration here, that is the furnace heater. It's a little chilly here. It's in the 40s. So we have that going today. Down here at your fuse panel, you have your 12 volt and your 110 fuses here. Your breakers and your fuses. These are automotive fuses. You have these orange ones are the battery anti-reversal. 
if uh, you hooked your battery up backwards or something with that happened, these would pop. So if you're plugged in, you can still have power to the whole coach, but you won't be charging your battery. Or if you're only battery and your battery is good, but you have no power anywhere else, it may be these fuses. The other things you may occasionally hear a fan coming out of here. That's because there's a fan in there to cool the board down. It usually only comes on during the summer when it's hot. And has that propane leak detector by your feet? Yes, the propane okay. leak detector's there. And on the ceiling, there's a carbon monoxide and a fire and a smoke detector. This one's wired to your battery. So if you leave your battery connected, that will kill your battery even if you have everything else off. Yeah, it drains a small little amount. So if you're going to leave it for a week or two, you may want to unhook your battery. If you hear something chirp, it's usually yeah, hooked up still. Your, yeah, yeah. means your battery's low. Okay. Uh, underneath this bunk is where the water pump is, which I'm not sure you can easily see. And okay. again, it's all screwed down. There's, you'd have to unscrew the bed itself to pull it up to get to the water pump. Coming back here into your bathroom. This one GFI outlet controls every outlet in the coach. So if you don't have power and outlet, I would check this first before I check the fuse panel. So reset is right on there. Push the tab in in the middle between the two outlets, and that's your GFI reset. Yes. And then your fan, the controls for the fan are on the fan themselves. You have, you have your speeds here, and now it's not going to turn on until you open the fan. Once you open it, you can then turn it on. You have your different speeds zero off. There is a glass fuse in here. So if this fan is not working, you may want to check this little fuse first. And then just shut your lid. And you're good. And then shower is the same as the shower at home. The toilet, as we were saying, when you first use, you're going to want to drop the chemical down straight into the toilet. Mm -hmm. By opening it, by pushing the pedal down, mm -hmm. is how you flush it or open it up. Okay. And that's about everything on this coach. Okay, great. I well, appreciate the walkthrough information. Again, this is a 2014 Gray Wolf 27 BHK. We thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.